popping, popping, and I ain't even know it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Patty. For those of you who do not know, hence the name of my channel, Phenomenally Patty. And we are back, finally, <laughs> with a cozy conversation. So go ahead, relax a little bit before we get into this conversation. So guys, caveat, you know we have to do these things these days. I'm not a life coach, nor do I want to be a life coach. This is not a guide for how to live your life. <laughs> These are simply just conversations that I'm really having with myself of lessons that I'm learning, things I'm going through that I just wanna share with the world. And if you feel me, cool. If you don't, cool. You just know you are not obligated to be here, to listen to it. If it feel good to your spirit, I'm happy. If it don't, that's cool too. <laughs> So guys, it's been a minute, it's been a minute. I haven't done a cozy conversation, I think, since April. It's been a while, y'all, and this year, it's, it's been a lot of stress. <laughs> it's been a lot of stress going on, just all aspects of life. Your girl's a little tired, but finally starting to feel rejuvenated, finally getting back into the point where I am ready to share. I am ready to discuss all the things that have been going on in my head lately. So here we go. So this topic, well today doesn't have a topic. It's just catching up. Um, the episodes following will get back on track to have different discussion points, main subjects and whatnot. Um, so if you've been keeping up with my channel, then you know that I recently just turned 30 years old. <laughs> Welcome to the 30s club. And y'all, it brought a wave of emotions. A wave of emotions. And it's really because there's so much pressure put on a woman. Um, they make you feel like your youth is gone when you turn 30 and your life is over. If you haven't gotten to a great point in your career, you never will. They just People just make it seem sometimes like 30 is the end all be all. Like you can't make mistakes anymore. You shouldn't be doing X, Y, Z. And then add on the pressure of being a woman that is single with no children. The pressure is real. The pressure is so real. And what's worse is, especially when it comes to this conversation about being married and having kids, is the fact that it's women. It's women that be putting this pressure on other women. Caveat, I'm sorry if you can hear the noise. They're out there leaf blowing, mowing grass or something right now. And it sucks. It sucks that other women know how you feel and still are putting pressures on you. And it sucks more when people who are in unhappy relationships and marriages be pushing you to do it. Conversation for another day. <laughs> um, and honestly, it is a real, I don't want to say scary, but uncomfortable or just like, it's a shifting period of your life when you look around and you start to notice that like, dang, yo, most of my friends are in long-term committed relationships, married, got kids, and you sitting looking around the table like, it's one or two of us here that's not. And people put a lot of pressure on you too. And I think what happens and what can happen is sometimes people start choosing relationships just to have those titles even though they don't really fit who they are. Um, luckily for me, I started to feel all of those feelings a few years ago, pre-COVID, because that for me was when a lot of my relationships with friends were having a shift because they were getting into long-term relationships and married and having kids and whatnot. Um, and it's different. It can't make you feel like, yo, what's wrong with me? Why didn't I get chose or this or that? Um, but I am very fortunate 
to have had that time period to really grow into myself and really discover the things that I want and I can honestly wholeheartedly say I am very very glad that God allowed things to maneuver the way he did because I don't think that I could have become this person with any of the relationships that I was involved in previously <laughs> um, and I I'm excited I don't feel like the world ends at 30 um, God did major things for me in my 20s, y'all. Major things in my relationships, in my career, friendships. There were major, major shifts. And when I honestly and really and truly think about it, if God did that for me in my 20s, I can't even imagine what my 30s are about to be like. Like this decade is about to be lit. It is about to be lit. It's about to be a movie. And I'm really, really excited. I am. I am. It was weird and comfortable when that shift happened of like, woo, a few more hours left in the 20s. Like, it was, that was real uncomfortable. <laughs> but I'm excited. I'm really, really excited. Um, I feel like I've grown a lot. I've dealt with a lot. And um, also in turning 30, y'all, get a little personal. I also just completed a year of, I don't want to use the term celibacy. Because I feel like it just comes with all these negative connotations and all that type of stuff. But I have not dated or, you know, in a year. And I'm really proud of myself. I don't even think I brought up that turning point to anybody in my life or like friends or like hey guys I did it I made it but I am so proud of myself y'all because listen it's not the easiest decision rocking alone I think I spent so many years stuck in that like situationship no title types of situations um and fell into that cycle because I kept lying to myself I kept telling myself that, oh, it's fine. As long as I'm getting the physical, I'm okay. It's going to happen for me. And it was always that sinking feeling of like, bruh, I want more than this. I ain't trying to be nobody's sneaky link. I want to be in a relationship, not just have relations. <laughs> and I'm so proud of myself, guys. I am actually gonna be taking myself on a solo date because I haven't done that in a really long time actually I think the last time I took myself on a solo date was when I went to see Lotto but I really want to celebrate that moment because I can't even believe I'm really telling y'all about it to be honest <laughs> um, but even getting to this point of life where I'm so comfortable with who I am like I'm trying not to cry because I'd be crying in these conversations all the time but like to be at a point in your life where you're truly comfortable with who you are and where you are and things that you've been through is such a it's such a good feeling it is such a good feeling and I'm proud of myself for choosing myself I'm proud of myself for not settling. I am proud of myself for not settling for less than what I deserve and less for what I want. It's a different type of situation and position to be in when you're cool with that, when you're like, yo, I don't want to be in a relationship. I just want to do this or that. But it's different when you want it and you're denying yourself it, you know? Um, and I'm so proud of my strength. Like, for so long, I just felt like, oh, well, I just need this little bit. I just need this little that, this or that. And to be like, bruh, I did it. I made it. <laughs> oh, I, I am really proud of myself. And going through that year's journey has been really interesting. Um, I don't know. It's like... I don't know, part of me felt kind of embarrassed to talk about it, to tell people about it um, at first because it was just like, that's just not really the type of world we live in, you know what I'm saying? Um, not knocking anybody's decision because your girl was praying about this choice 
for about two years before I finally decided to go all the way through with it. Um, and honestly, it's honestly for me, it was just like when you're in a bad relationship and you finally get to that point of where you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, like you knew it was over a long time ago, but you still were holding on to it. And you finally just like, all right, I'm gonna rip the bandaid off. It's gonna hurt. It's gonna feel uncomfortable. But like, I feel unstoppable. I feel nice not having someone else's actions cause me to feel some type of way. Um, and it feels good. I feel strong. I am so proud of myself. I am so proud of myself. Um, I am not ready yet to open up about relationship history and things that I've endured, dating and all of that, but just know I am very proud of myself and it is an accomplishment and I, I'm very proud um, and I'm excited to start back dating once I relocate because right now I got a whole lot going on. I, I, just, I just can't right now. <laughs> Um, and just doing things differently. I was on that, that, that same roller coaster. It was like, you want something different, you gotta do something different. So I had to do something different. Um, there was an episode of this, like, podcast I was watching on, um, YouTube. If I can think of it, I'll have it listed below where this lady, she had been celibate, I think, for like two or three years, and she was going through like the waves of emotions of how you felt. Um, and it was super, super relatable. And it also helped me to feel like, yes, like, I got this. I'm capable. I am worthy. <laughs> and I'm deserving. And I don't have to prove it by extreme measures. I don't have to prove it by extreme measures. I don't have to prove it by extreme measures. And you know what I mean by that. You know it's that like ride or die type of concept or you ain't been in the mud with somebody that you don't deserve to be treated nicely. You do. You do. You shouldn't have to go to hell and back with somebody just to be treated nicely. At all. Um, and I, I don't know y'all, I'm trying not to cry because I'd be crying on here <laughs> so much in these cozy conversations, but like, I chose me and I'm very, very proud of that. I'm very proud of it. It's hard not to settle. It's hard when you want to be in a relationship and you're willing to and do anything for it. To get to a point in your life where you finally like, nah, bruh, you gotta come at me different. And knowing what I need, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, it's different, but we're gonna move on, cause we're gonna move on. <laughs> um, so someone who has truly inspired me um, and helped shape like how I live my life is good old Jackie Ina. If you don't know who she is, you need to stop what you're doing right now and go find out who she is. Um, I've been following Jackie Ina the GOAT for years. She's been on YouTube for years, a very, very long time. And she was one of those OG, you know, makeup content creators who were calling brands out left and right for not having shades for all the brown women, all of our chocolateness, all of our chocolate shades, all of the, the various beautiful shades that we come in. And there were, I learned how to do makeup via YouTube University. <laughs> and there were some girls I would watch for technique and then there were other women like Jackie Yana where I'm like, what looks good on our skin? Like show me, teach me how to make my eyes look all delicious and succulent and all of that stuff. And you know, while she's doing her makeup, of course she talks to you. And watching how she learned how to love on herself inspired me to want to learn how to love on myself. Cause I felt like, right, when you're in relationships, right, or your dude about to pull up, you gonna go and get a shower, you gonna shave, you gonna exfoliate. And it's just like, if I can do that for a man, 
Why can't I do that for myself? Why is the only time I'm doing something for myself for somebody else? And it was really inspiring to me. And I was so proud of her when she finally started her Instagram page, Lavishly Jackie, because she hadn't really been open about her life and how it looks different. Like, you know, she ain't struggling no more. Sis is balling. Like, <laughs> her life look good. And having all those pressures of people that still wanted the old version of who she was and being kind of fearful of it, uh, she really helped encourage that main character energy. So if you're not familiar with what that is, it's basically living your life if it was a movie. So if you were write yourself a movie about your life, what would you do? I would get out of bed. I would write in my journal. I would go get coffee while I have this beautiful background music. Go out on my balcony with my breakfast scone. You know what I'm saying? And my journal and pray, read the Bible, do whatever. If you were writing your life as a movie, but you were the main character, how would you like your life to look? And it was so inspiring to me. It is still inspiring to me, especially even her being in a relationship, being engaged, about to get married. Uh, which is her second marriage, but shout out to her for even giving love a chance again, and still taking the time to love on herself. I have learned so much from her. Um, and also just going through the motions of my life and incorporating some of those things, it really helped me to learn to see that happiness is your responsibility. It ain't nobody's responsibility to make you happy. Nobody is supposed to do X, Y, Z for you. That's you. That's a you problem. That's on you to create happiness for yourself. Um, I'm a planner. Didn't know this about you, girl. Your girl loves to plan. I love doing things. I am about experience. I love a new experience. I love experiences. Add new experiences with new food, babe. Hey, your girl is happy. It makes me so happy and planning and organizing. While sometimes it can be draining, it's your girl's gift. She's a Virgo. Don't nobody plan like a Virgo. Come on now. We don't look at a sheet of paper as two-sided. We see it as three-dimensional, okay? We got the front, the back, the sides, all the angles. I do this. And I love it, even though sometimes I do get tired, which is why event planning is, is not, it's not, it's not my ministry, okay? I know how to make me happy. I ain't trying to make nobody else happy. Um, and it's something that I love. So like planning my birthday, while it was very stressful, because there were some variables that I did not intend for, had to make a whole bunch of side conversation. It was a lot, but it came together and it was exactly what I wanted. And it was beautiful. And I had such unique experiences that made me happy. And I documented it so well, cause you know, your girl, I mean, here, I'm on YouTube, <laughs> photographer. I love to document my life. Um, it's something that's very important to me um, because sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget about everything that you've conquered and I love being able to go back through pictures and videos and remembering exactly what I was going through in that moment exactly what was happening in my life and remembering that I still made it I still survived sometimes you forget sometimes even when you come to your body sometimes you know you thought you was real rough busted and disgusted and you go back and was like oh baby I was popping I was popping I was popping and I ain't even know it. So documenting is something super, super important to me um, in discovering what makes me happy. Like, I have such a sense of self, even just turning 30, and I am very happy about that. I am very happy that I did the uncomfortable work of figuring out who I am and what I like and what I need. Um, and I'm happy about that. I am. I'm gearing up for this move, y'all. I got a few more months. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, of course, y'all gonna find out where, when, and all that stuff 
towards the end of this year but i'm so excited to redecorate y'all don't get me wrong i love my place i am very blessed i love it i love it but i'm one of those people that get that itch you know that seasonal itch to to to, to redecorate to move something from here to there, flip it, twist it, add some new colors. And I haven't done that. My place has been looking the same for a year. And I've been trying to be so disciplined. I go on at home goods and at home at Hobby Lobby. Cause your girl don't got self-control. Um, and I'm just excited. Um, some people have been asking me, what is this move about? Why am I doing it? And honestly, y'all, it's been something that's been on my heart for a few years. Um, I think I've said this a lot that I am not a super sharer about certain things. And it's no shade. I don't feel like the world is out to get me. I'm not that type of person at all. It's just that sometimes God gave your vision only to you and not to other people. And sometimes... When you're sharing certain things with people who are not at the same level or a higher level of faith, then sometimes they start speaking and projecting the lack of belief they have in their own personal lives onto you. And sometimes you can be at such peace about decisions and, and all the things. And as soon as you open up and share with people, they start planting these seeds of doubt, which are seeds of doubt they have for their own selves and their own lives. Um, and sometimes I just I want to talk to God about certain things first y'all y'all heard me say that before and I mean it like I just let me see what's up with him and I went to visit several times um, my very first time going to the place that I would be relocated to was in 20, 2017 and I've been back multiple times I can't move anywhere that I have not visited that don't work for me <laughs> Okay, I need to see it in, in different seasons <laughs> I need to see during the daytime, nighttime. I, I need to see it multiple times before I fully commit. Um, and it's it's fitting some of the things I want long term. And I've just, I don't know how to describe it, y'all. I don't know if y'all ever got that itch of where it's like, yo, I gotta move. Like, something's like, I gotta do something. It's time. It's time. It's time for a fresh start. It's time for a new beginning. It's just time and I don't know how else to explain it if I just feel like my time living here for the time being is just over and I've also gotten to a level of trust and faith with God where I know that no I could go and not like it and come right on back to being me or move somewhere else like it's I'm gonna be good I'm gonna be good regardless of where my address is um, and I truly, truly believe that. Um, I do have some anxiousness about where I'm going to end up living specifically in that area because one of the things the DMV did to your girl is it made her a little booshki. It made a girl a little booshki. She likes the finer things of life. Um, but I also have some financial goals, so I'm having a real dilemma. If I'm gonna do a luxury apartment, the townhouse, am I gonna rent condo? Just do a regular apartment? What am I gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I'm still praying on that. <laughs> praying on that heavily. Um, but I'm excited. I really, really am. I'm excited to continue to live fearlessly. Because, like the words say, God did not give us the spirit of fear but of love, power, and of sound mind. God did not give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of sound mind. Um, and that's one of my favorite scriptures. Um, don't quote me word for word, okay? Don't do that. <laughs> Ain't that type of Christian now. Um, and it's just a reminder that not to live in fear and I think when I was becoming comfortable with who I am, that I don't want to be scared, y'all. Y'all heard me say multiple times and multiple these little episodes that I do not want to live a life full of I woulda, coulda, shoulda, woulda, no. 
I will not be on my deathbed talking about, dang, when I was 25, I should have did this. When I was 30, I should have left that dude and blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> I did everything that I wanted to do. And that is something I'm striving to do because you never know when you're going to get called home. You don't know. You really, you really don't know. You really don't know. And I just, I don't want to be afraid. Um, and a big part of that journey stemmed from me moving to the DMV. I was applying to jobs after college, y'all. I was doing like, I think I was making myself do three or four applications a day for about a year. And I was getting so discouraged. I was like, I want a nice job in DC. I want to move to DC. I got it. I want to be there. And I finally heard back from TSA. Yes, I used to work at TSA at good old Dulles Airport. It was a job that I won't ever do again. Um, <laughs> and I remember getting that offer letter. And I remember just about, I'm not even knowing how much it was really about to make, not knowing anything about anything. I asked my auntie if I could live with her for a while, and I packed up my car two weeks and was out. Bye, 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 bye. And I just felt like sometimes we do this thing where we're praying and we're knocking on doors, and God has started to open it, and then we'd be like, Was that the door? Was that you? I mean, I don't know. Nah, bruh, I'm going through. Could not see it, then I know what was gonna happen. Then now I'm in up back in Richmond, and it's been moved up here in 2015, six, seven years, longer than that. My math don't be mapping. Um, and what a life! What a life that I now have because I decided to go through that crack. When God opened that door for me. And you pray, you make two steps, and you let God do the rest. Um, and my life is so amazing. I'm really, if I could paint a picture of how I wanted my life to be, this girl who is this girl, her late 20s, early 30s now, like, the things I'm able to do, I'm traveling. Like, your girl got a passport? I've been out of the country. Like, I travel. I be up on, on, on airplanes. <laughs> like, I, I can afford to live in the apartment that I'm in, y'all. When I got my keys, y'all, I got my keys and I came in here and I sat on the corner, on the floor, and I cried. And I cried and I cried because I was so thankful that I was finally, I finally got to a job where I could afford it in a nice one. Like, what? I'm sorry, y'all. Like, I know I'm getting emotional. Um, and I, it's just, it was such a surreal moment and trusting God has never failed me. So I'm getting ready to take another leap. And I'm excited. I'm excited. I am excited. I think I've talked to y'all about sometimes, you know, how I shifted my prayers and how not only do I pray for things, but I ask God for it to put me in the right position to prepare me for certain things. And I'm ready. I am ready. I am so, so ready. I have so many plans, you know. I said, your girl's a planner. Things I want to do in my career, different things I need to do. Um, I'm excited to grow photography. I'm looking forward to that slowdown period of adjusting so I can really work on some things um, that I haven't been able to because my life has been such a fast pace. Um, and I'm excited. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm going to miss my friends so, so much, but they ain't going nowhere. I ain't like, it's a lot, bruh. <laughs> We're friends forever. <laughs> I don't, forever. <laughs> I'm still going to be able to see them. Um, not as often, you know, of course, but I am ready. I'm ready. I am so, so ready. 
for all of the beautiful things life has to offer um that's really pretty much it that's all i really had to say today i just want to catch y'all up about my life where's my head been at um, my job had been super stressing me out um past few months it's finally slowed back down but your girl was like <clears throat> taking up my time and doing my extra projects <laughs> um but we are going to get back into those like theme based based subject style cozy conversations the next one i think is going to be called either waiting season or delayed but not denied because that's been heavy on my heart i have a lot i want to share about that um and again i'm never trying to offend anybody this is just patty's life lessons that she's sharing these are just Patty's life lessons that I am sharing. And if you feel me cool, and if you don't, that's cool too. Thank you so much for watching. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. <laughs> and I'll catch y'all in another episode. Bye.